Hey. Yeah? We should talk. About what? We're here to talk about Christmas. Just Christmas in general? No. You want to talk about this movie way more than I me. do. I do very much want to talk about this movie. It was difficult to watch it again and not... Cry? But we're here to talk about A Christmas Carol. Almost. Or the greatest story ever told, Ghosts of Girlfriend's Past. Ghosts of Ex-Girlfriend's Past? No, it, the movie is Ghost of Girlfriend's Past. Past. Yes. The 2009 masterpiece Starring Matthew McConaughey, Jennifer Garner, Michael Douglas, mm -hmm. and what's her name from, um, uh, 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 uh Gwen Stacy. Yes, and Gwen, Gwen Stacy, the Spider-Man character? Mm-hmm. She dies in this one, too. We're starting at the beginning, A Christmas Carol. Here's the thesis of this conversation. A Christmas Carol, as a story. Is a bad story. It's a bad story. <laughs> Ghost of Girlfriend's Past is a better Christmas Carol. Yeah, Ghost of Cr Girlfriend's Past is a modern retelling of A Christmas Carol. It's not technically a Christmas movie. Yes, it is. It should be. It's our Christmas movie. It's our Christmas movie. Ghosts of Girlfriend's Past is the only Christmas Carol I had ever seen until last year. I had never seen Ghosts of Girlfriend's Past until last, last year. year. Where I amended that. But I had seen a number of Christmas carols, you know. Have you from, seen all of them? I, I've seen Muppet Christmas Carol. That's the one um, I saw last year. I've unfortunately seen the CG animated hellscape that was the Jim Carrey, the Jim Carrey one. Yeah. They're not as good as Ghosts Ghost of Girlfriend's Girlfriend Past. <laughs> I mean, do you want to try and recap Christmas Carol from memory? The only two references I have are Ghosts of Girlfriend's Past and A Muppet Christmas Carol. I've seen Christmas Carol more times. So I'll do Christmas Carol. Tell, uh, tell me the story of A Christmas okay. Carol. Tell them the story of A Christmas Carol because they mm -hmm. probably have not heard it. A Christmas Carol is a story that takes place in ye old days. What era is that? England. <laughs> is it probably. British? I thought it was American. I have no idea where it takes place, but it's old time any. You have your main character, Ebenezer Scrooge. And Ebenezer Scrooge is an old miser. Scrooge uh, does not like Christmas. Scrooge does not like Christmas. Scrooge is anti-Christmas. Nor does he like people. He's very greedy. He's mean. He's not a nice guy. Nobody really likes Scrooge. And in the night, he is visited by the ghost of a former business associate who had died, who warns him that his greedy miserly ways are going to result in him having a unfortunate afterlife as well as lead to him continuing to be alone and unloved. So he sees three ghosts. Yeah, the first one shows up, ghost of Girl Consecutively. Ghost of, consecutively. It uh, doesn't a, stop. Yeah, a ghost of Christmas past who shows him his past. In his past, you see that he spent his entire childhood away from his family at a boarding school with a very strict, very rules and work-centric headmaster. He also has a love interest. He's big on, you Ebenezer. know, Ebenezer and the Scrooge he's putting down. He is caught up in this idea, you have to have financial stability first. And this drives a wedge between him and his relationship, which I think hardens his heart a good deal. Then you get uh, uh, him returned to his home, where he assumes he was hallucinating uh, just a little bit, the ghost of uh, a Christmas present shows up, who's generally portrayed as a happier go luckier figure, whereas the ghost of Christmas past is usually like a cherub or like a little angel baby or the most terrifying thing ever if you're watching Muppet Christmas Carol. <laughs> ghost of Christmas present shows up and walks him through what is currently going on in his life, or rather, in the world around him at that time. It takes him to a party that's happening that year. Scrooge is charmed by the Christmas 
party celebration. But even as he starts to sort of engage with the idea, he witnesses that the people there are all sort of, not sort of, they're all a good deal happier that Scrooge is not around, or that they are no longer at work, or that they no longer have to be around Scrooge. And then everyone in the room, ah, Ebenezer Scrooge, ah ha 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 ha, what a terrible man. I hope he dies. dies. He then gets taken to the home of Kermit the Frog. And you see his wife and his, several of his children prepping a very measly uh, Christmas Eve dinner. Yes. I do know that Tiny Tim is a thing in all of them. Yes, Tiny Tim is present in every version, except... Ghosts of Girlfriend's Past. Ghosts of Girlfriend's Past. Past. No, no Tiny Tim. No Not Tiny Tim. needed. He, he, he observes this very poor family enjoy each other's company and he sees sort of the goodwill in some people so, oh maybe i shouldn't be a piece of shit and then ghost of christmas present grows old and tired and leaves him alone outside in the cold the ghost of christmas future shows up and ghost of christmas future is portrayed a number of ways but it's always meant to be a silent observer in Muppet Christmas Carol, it's a terribly nightmarish void with long arms and long fingers. Then he is taken to a graveyard. It is on the way there that they real that Ebenezer realizes that this old greedy man that everyone is happy is dead, and that all of his things are being sold off, and he has no legacy, and no one is sad for him, is him. Is is Ebenezer Scrooge. He is released from this vision of the future and realizes he is at home on Christmas morning. And he hops up out of bed and shouts out the window, asks a little chimney sweep, street sweep boy, what day is it? He says, it's Christmas day. And he says, by gosh, I'm not too late. And he gets up and he runs out the door and he is giving money to this person and that person, and he makes a big donation to a Christmas charity that had bugged him in the beginning of the show. But then he buys the biggest Christmas turkey that there is and has it carried all the way by a bunch of townspeople all the way over to Tiny Tim's house. And everyone sits around the table at the end of the story, happy that Scrooge is no longer a greedy bastard and celebrating him and how cool a guy he is now. Christmas Carol is very specifically a story engineered to get you excited and in love with the idea of Christmas as a holiday and how important it is, but also that one of the core values of Christmas is treat people good and don't be selfish. I've only seen Ghosts of Girlfriend's Past. Girlfriend's Past, thank you. My favorite movie I can't remember the title of. I had never seen A Christmas Carol. So when I watched A Christmas Carol last year, I said, that's it? It just seems Weird, because in my blissful ignorance of Matthew McConaughey and his travels through his girlfriend's past, thought they were all like that. It seems to me that Ebenezer is scared straight. They show him his funeral and say, hey, if you're not nice, nobody no will love coming. ya. No one's coming to your funeral. Which feels selfish. People talk mean about me behind my back. That makes me sad. Boo. <laughs> and let me tell you, Matthew McConaughey would never. The synopsis of the best movie ever is, it is not Christmas. It's Christmas time. It is snowing. Our jolly tale uh, takes place in New York, and it is the tale of a misogynist. He is the equivalent of a Twitter slash YouTube hookup artist. You see this girl <laughs> reaching for this bag of Doritos. How do you open? He is a famous photographer. That comes in later. Everything comes in later. He is very confident, very douchey. Slide into your DMs, whatever, you're ugly anyway. <laughs> Stick with me. Stick with me in this misogynist tale. It is worth it. It is 2009. We it's love. not completely worth it. Hmm. It is not Citizen Kane. Matthew McConaughey is introduced to us. He is mean to his secretary. He is mean to ladies. He breaks up with three women at the same time on a Skype call. The costume design's on point. He comes with the Ebenezer Scrooge scarf. Isn't that an iconic Yeah, thing? the and red scarf. And at the beginning, scarf. he like throws around in his Lambo and his 
leather jacket, not your mama's Ebenezer yeah, skirt. Yeah, right? <laughs> he is going to his little brother's wedding, who is getting married to Gretchen Wiener, who's amazing in this. It is so wedding cake, you stupid bitch! He goes there, he is a douche. He makes horrible speeches about how love is not real, marriage is stupid. An archaic institution. Archaic and oppressive institution. It should have been abolished years ago. Everyone is appalled by him. Not once does this movie frame his misogynistic ways as anything respectable. Even the ladies that he's hitting on who are attracted to him all have this air and look of like, really? He also runs into his childhood love, Jennifer Garner. She knows him very well. They have some good chemistry, but it's obvious that she is not about his horrible, horrible ways. So they're all getting ready for the wedding. A again, he is just negging left and right, flirting with the bridesmaids, two of which he's already slept with. Are you the one my brother slept with? Because I don't like to grow a sword. Wait, what? The other half of this is his uncle. His uncle is the original 70s hookup artist yeah his car is like the stabbing wagon he's like the epitome of that man the one we no one likes um but he is obsessed with him he wants to be just like him that night he decides to go bang a bridesmaid at the same time jennifer garner is being pushed some wedding tail doctor man better man a better in all ways man is shown to Jennifer Garner as the rival love interest because obviously they still love each other. We are then told from Michael Douglas drunkenly that hear he, hear he, be warned, you are going to be visited by three ghosts. Michael Douglas's character is dead. Yeah, oh, yes. Um, Michael Douglas has the little... The ghost of Michael Douglas. Thank you. The ghost of Michael Douglas has a, a good little schmooze of warning us of what's to come. He goes up to bang a bridesmaid and finds Emma Stone! The ghost of Emma Stone. The bridesmaid. I got it! Whoa. <laughs> Have you missed me? Who are you? She is his high school fling. And Emma Stone is one amazing in this movie. The power of a relationship lies with whoever cares less. Just a giant mood. But she takes him into his past, and she takes him to see his first love, which is Jennifer Garner. We see that Jennifer Garner is actually the first person who ever bought him a camera, and he takes a picture of her. I'm gonna keep it forever. I'm gonna keep it forever. There's just not movies like this anymore. In campiness, in mediocre quality. We'll get there. Yes. We'll get there. <laughs> And then his parents die. When he was young, him and his little brother were left orphaned when their parents died in a car accident to be raised by their uncle, Wayne, Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas. <laughs> uncle Michael Douglas. Fast forwarding into junior high school, him and Jennifer Garner are these little middle schoolers they're cutesy with each other. They're obviously wanting to date. He wants to make a move, but can't. He gets scared, he gets he nervous, nervous, and she is taken away by a high school jock. And he is, his little heart is shattered. Day one of potential incel lifestyle. Heartbroken, he laments about what happened to his uncle, who said, kid, women are Sluts. Get an ugly broad. You might as well take her out behind the shed and put one behind the ear. That dog won't hunt. But Women suck. Close your feelings up. And Don't love them. Man up. He basically teaches him how to be him and become the the douchiest dude bro douche. It's it's horrible. But the movie knows it and yeah. is constantly telling you it's not okay. Names, hey, no first names if you can swing it. <laughs> Will somebody please call Child Protective Services? Shh, quiet. Fast forwarding a little bit, she takes him to her, which is the first time the ghost, of Emma Stone. the ghost of Emma Stone takes her to their first kiss to show him that 
he had done so in order to snub Jennifer Garner and breaks her heart in return. He becomes a womanizer through high school, he becomes a womanizer in his life, he's playing game, he is speaking Spanish and dropping his salary. Bank north of 150k a year, it's totally killer, I love my job. Hector! Yeah? Uh, dos dirty martinis, por favor, mas dirty para me. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. I can't believe I just what? said that either. You and negging women and how crowding them around him with his hippy dippy hair. And then he runs into Jennifer Garner again. And they hit it off. And we see that he has the opportunity. They had a chance together. There's a beautiful, romantic, wonderful montage that you don't get in movies anymore where they're super cutesy with each other. He's trying to get laid, but she's not into his game. And she's like, no, 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 you can't come upstairs. But then he comes up a little bit more of the stairs. And then she's like, no, no, no. And then he comes up a little bit more of the stairs. And then they kiss and they are obviously in love. And they, ho, ho, ho. then he leaves in Because the they morning. snuggled. Yes, because they snuggled and spooned, and snuggling and spooning is not for men. Scared of his becoming a wuss, decides to leave in the morning, though she asks him not to. He becomes a douche again. They never speak, and then there's a crazy, kind of terrifying montage of him going through all of the women he's slept with, rows and rows and hundreds of women. That's the ghosts of all his girlfriends past climacting into that moment. Then he comes back to the present. Now, unlike any other Christmas Carol, all of the ghost visitations are interrupted by what is going on at the wedding and the rehearsal in which he is freaking out and thinking that he's hallucinating, thinking that he's drunk or needs alcohol. He destroys a wedding cake in only a millennial slapstick comedy way, which is just chef's kiss or chef's unkiss since the wedding cake is destroyed. over the cake and figuring out he says hey I wanted to apologize to you properly and then he starts saying I've realized that I've always loved you it's always been the case she's like you're freaking me out anyway he ruins the wedding and tries to run away tries to go somewhere else but then ghost of Christmas present comes which is his secretary who is also amazing. Literally everyone in this cast is amazing and there is genuinely funny moments that I laugh at every single time. The ghost girlfriend's present? Mm -hmm. That makes no sense. Oh, tell me about it. But as sad as it is, I'm the only consistent woman in your life. So here I am, just working on the weekend, again. She is there to tell him what a douche he still is. She shows him what's going on back in the mansion now that he's trying to run away and how everyone is talking about what a douche he is and how he's nothing and has no heart and no emotion and he's such a horrible misogynist and there's nothing good to him and he's literally ruining everything. His kid brother says, no actually, I mean, all of those things are true. He is a horrible guy, but you guys don't understand. Because our parents died, he was my father. He never got to have a childhood because he was raising me. He sacrificed himself basically to become a douchey child who had to be an adult too quickly. So that way his brother could remain pure and innocent and beautiful. And I cry every time. <laughs> he sees that and feels feelings and wants to immediately come back in and fix everything which he tries to do. Is this about the cake? No, this is not about the cake. This is about the fact that Paul slept with Donna, information that you so kindly shared with Denise earlier tonight. Gretchen Wiener is understandably very upset about this, but he tries to push them together and says, no, it's obvious to me that you guys love each other. 
which should mean a lot since he does not believe in love. But it doesn't work. Uh, they tell him to leave. His brother says, you know what? Fuck you, actually. Please get out. So he does try to leave and is presented with Ghosts of Girlfriend's Future, who is a beautiful <laughs> model doll woman who is just gorgeous and says nothing. She is the epitome of death done by Victoria's Secret. Maybe they just knew that he would only follow a hot chick. She shows him his future, which is first Jennifer Garner's wedding, which he accidentally or mistakenly thinks is his. It's not, it's to that awesome doctor man. And then she shows him his brother, who is not married because he ruined the wedding and slowly turns into an old man and visits his grave funeral. Visits the grave of Matthew McConaughey. Yes. Michael Douglas shows up again to say, yeah, that's the way I died as well. You are just like me. Good job. And then he pushes him into the grave and a bunch of women throw dirt into his face to bury him alive. It is just girl boss moments. He wakes up uh, screaming and then he throws open the window and says, what day is it? Is it Christmas? Young man, what day is it? Is it Christmas? No, it's Saturday, you moron. You know, it's not a Saturday, it's the day of the wedding. So he's excited for the wedding, but of course it's called off because he ruined everything and he is out of his mind concerned that his brother will die alone and sad because of him. In the midst of a blizzard, while the girls are driving away, gets into the stabbing wagon. Everything comes back into play. Every every payoff. It's a tight movie. It's, it's a tight. It's a good script. It's tight. Whatever script writer. Good job. He drives over the edges and crashes the car into the water, gets out, stops the car, and talks to Gretchen Wiener and says, listen, you are scared to be vulnerable because I'm scared to be vulnerable. And you think to yourself, if I leave first, then I don't have to put myself on the line. I do not have to expose my traumas, my behaviors, my, my insert everyone needs therapy here. He talks to her about how he understands how she feels. She has every right to feel that way, but she should take a risk on happiness because the true honesty is that there is no cynicism. It's that everyone is just scared to love just as he is. And he was so scared to love Jennifer Garner that he left her first in the case that she would ever leave him and again I cry every time what if she hurt me you know what if she left me what if she died straight to the gut because his parents died so he is traumatized by the death of his parents and is afraid that anyone he loves will die and he tells her please take a chance on love please let's do the wedding the wedding goes on and it is fun and beautiful and he takes pictures of it though he refused to do so at the beginning because he only takes pictures of naked ladies he gives a beautiful toast in which he says i actually want to be like my little brother now he goes outside to see jennifer garner and then he says i do love you i loved you this whole time everything i said was true I have only been scared to please give me another chance and she says how do I know you're not just feeding me another line how's this how do I know you're not just gonna be gone next time he says I gotcha and pulls out from his wallet the first photo he ever took of her because he was going to keep, keep it, it forever. forever forever they dance to their high school song they didn't get to the movie ends that's it that is a ghost of girlfriend's past. That movie is better, in my opinion. It was one of those movies that my dad bought in those giant Walmart $5 bins of yeah. movies. It's not an ugly movie. It's not Dune, but okay. there's a transition where he's walking through the forest after the ghosts of girlfriend's yeah, it's like future. Shot. It's just a beautiful little practical transition. The CG of his older brother turning into an old man into actual old makeup. In the day of CGI, I appreciate seeing old makeup. Even if it's not top-notch, it's just nice to know that 
union makeup workers were put to work. Yeah. Another beautiful lighting cue with them standing in the room watching Jennifer Garner wake up. Alone in the bed. It just just a cast. beautiful practical effect. The soundtrack, the little Christmassy do 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 when he is yeah. picking up the glasses is charming and cute. <laughs> lesson true it's not about greed or classism it is about misogyny and it is about being rude specifically to women but even there's a moment where ghosts of christmas present his secretary makes it out that when he says it was he a girlfriend's present thank you when he says that he doesn't believe in love and how it makes you weak and silly that he might not realize he's also talking about familial love and platonic love and it, don't you love your brother does that make you weak and he thinks no it doesn't i do love my brother and my brother loves his wife and i should respect that comparing it for like point for point for the progress from the inception of the story where we establish who they are the kind of shitty person they are mm -hmm. Follow it up with the three-step program that is rehabilitating a shitty person. And the conclusion. Ebenezer Scrooge doesn't get the point until he is shown the aftermath. And that's when he really doubles down on, I promise I'll be a better person. I promise everything's going to be so good and I'm going to be so kind and I'm going to be so generous. I promise. Please don't let this happen to me. But it's very selfishly motivated. What actually motivates Scrooge is a selfish desire to not be alone and not be thought of poorly. I'm going to be a good man and I'm going to do nice things so that People come to my funeral and people don't spit on my grave and steal all my things when I'm dead and so that my, my nephew and his wife don't um, play mean games about me when I'm not around. And also, Scrooge at the time of A Christmas Carol is an old man. So he's got like, what, four days left? So he's got a couple years to like make it up retroactively. Matthew McConaughey is in his prime. In A Christmas Carol, his past doesn't really explain why he's Does such a miser. So, it's a very weak reason. It's a very weak reason for behaviors to form. It just doesn't make sense to me. Whereas it makes sense to me why any sort of young boy in the patriarchy would become a misogynist when both of his parents died. He doesn't have parental figures to teach him right from wrong. He has to look out for his little brother. He feels like he's already an adult. And then so he looks to the only adults near him. And the only adult near him is fucking sex predator. Yes, I realized something on this reviewing that I did not realize. What did you realize? At the very beginning, you see from the past that his parents died in a car accident. His uncle was either his sister's brother or his father's brother, mm. that is how uncles work. They make a point several times to say that the Stabin Wagon does not, not have seatbelts. He never wore seatbelts. Never. I thought to myself on this viewing, oh, his brother died in a car accident and he drives a car with no seatbelts. And now Matthew McConaughey is like him and his little brother is better. Are they saying that they're a foil? That maybe their parents died or maybe he longs for death now because he's guilty that his brother died in a car accident when he was a better person and doesn't wear seatbelts so that way maybe he'll die because he's lonely and is misogynistic to hide his torment. Reaping the trauma of his life into the vicious cycle, it is an entire essay on the patriarchy. How it ruins everything. Later on, Matthew McConaughey risks his life in a car with no seatbelts when their parents died of a car accident in order to save his brother from loneliness and trauma and a, a lack of love. And again, I cry every time. It's a movie about beating the patriarchy. Yeah. And what's a better Christmas message? Exactly. It's so wedding cake, you stupid bitch! Merry Christmas. 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 <laughs> all right, all, all right, right, all right, right, all right. His name sounds like how he talks. 
Matthew McConaughey. It's like an onomatopoeia, but for him, Matthew McConaughey. Like, yeah. you have to say it yeah. like him. Or he's like a Pokemon who says their name the way... <laughs> McConaughey. 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 McConaughey, hey, hey! <laughs> I have one critique of the movie. So we got married not too long ago. Fun fact, this movie came out the year we met. And I started to notice something I didn't notice before, and now I notice it all the time. What did you notice? Every wedding, in real life or in Hollywood, has the same chair. It's the same chair. There's a chair in the wedding world Community, wedding community, please explain this the chair. The wedding chair. It's, it's the chair. We had them at our wedding. It is a gold, sometimes white chair that looks like rickets. In this movie, they're expensive people. They're upper class people in a mansion. Yeah. And these are the chairs they get. And this chair I also saw in Fifty Shades for Christian and Anna's wedding. And that dude has more money than anybody because he's, he's a vampire. a vampire. Yeah. 